Katie, a crash that I had tweeted out a couple minutes ago has now cleared in the downtown loop, but we are seeing several slowdowns throughout the metro. Let's go ahead and start on I-70, or excuse me, at the Triangle. That's where we're seeing quite the delay here. If you're heading the Triangle to Overland Park, Metcalf area, about a 14-minute delay. Normally, that runs you uh, closer to 7. We are seeing slowdowns still on I-70 near Cable Dahmer Arena. It gets a little bit better once you get to the sports complex. Slowdowns as well in the Northland, Clay Como to downtown, and even in uh, Johnson County. I, I switched our map here because I saw more traffic southbound, especially in the Merriam area. That's where you're seeing a bit of a delay. We're going to check our cameras, see what we can find there in the next couple of minutes. Cody sounds good, Jamie. Thank you. Locked doors, ID checkpoints, more mental health help. Those are just some of the plans being put in place to keep students safe in Olathe schools. Administrators outlined their safety plan last night, more than a month after the shooting at Olathe East. Now, the district says schools will not be adding metal detectors, though, even though several people asked about them. Administrators claim that the risks outweigh the benefits. They're also working to improve communication between staffers who travel between buildings so they know if there's a problem the next place they're headed. The district also plans to add more lighting and cameras. Now, the only applause of the night came when one parent commented that she thought the district handled the recent school shooting well. Our school resource officers, who I just can't be more grateful for, um, and they showed why they are so important in the last month um, in the incident in our building. About 75 people were there. The district did not directly comment on the March 4th shooting. There is, of course, an internal and criminal investigation underway. The 18 year old charged with the shooting in Olathe East is still in the hospital in serious condition, though doctors say he's stable. Jalen Elmore is accused of shooting an assistant principal and school resource officer. They are both recovering. Olathe schools recently cut student wellness advocates because of budget challenges. There will be four in the district. Parents, though, said that they would like more funding set aside to address mental health and hopefully prevent safety threats. We have new details on what could have been an explosive scare in Independence. Thankfully wasn't. Police found part of a grenade in the middle of a field near Truman Road in Sterling. Uh, no one was hurt. The threat is gone now. Police found out this was just the outer shell of a grenade without any dangerous explosives inside. Police are now working to figure out exactly how it got there. The Unified Government of Wyandotte County and KCK is still reeling from a cyber attack. KBC 9's Martin Augustine is watching the story. He's live in Wyco Forest this morning. Martin, which services are still affected? Well, a lot of a lot of services, everything from legal matters to renewing the license plates on your car. The unified government still trying to untangle the effects of this weekend hack. The state of Kansas has suspended all motor vehicle services with Wyandotte County because of this. For now, there can be no electronic filings for the county's court proceedings and services through the district attorney's office are delayed as well. This attack severe enough to warn investigations by the Department of Homeland Security and the FBI. Casey CK Mayor Tyrone Garner says we appreciate the hard work of UG technology and security teams on their swift response to the attack. Mayor Garner optimistic the county's going to bounce right back once everything settles down and everything gets worked on here. But we should point out that there is a cybersecurity team from the Mid-America Regional Council that's in on this trying to determine whether or not any data or personal information has been compromised. Reporting live, KCK Martin Augustine, KBC 9 News. Martin, thank you. There are appeal plans in the works this morning after a federal judge shut down the federal mask mandate on public transportation. When it comes to wearing masks, people we spoke with had mixed opinions on the move. Yeah, I do. Um, mainly just because, you know, still in those tight quarters. We're going to protect ourselves. You know, if we want to wear masks, we're going to wear masks. I think everybody has a right to choose whether or not they want to wear a mask. And if there's no mandate, I support that. It's pretty awesome. You can see smiley faces. CDC still encourages wearing a mask in crowded indoor areas. Now that this mandate is lifted, what happens to the people, all those people who were banned from flying for refusing to mask up? Well, that decision lies with each airline. We heard from United, who says they will allow some passengers back, but on a case-by-case -case basis. Remember, some of those passengers got pretty unruly. The airline banned about 1,000 air travelers over the past two years. Ride sharing is affected by the ruling, too. For now, masks are optional for Uber and Lyft riders and drivers. Lyft also says passengers can sit in the front seat again. Uber still asks you to keep that seat open unless you're in a full car. We continue to track COVID hospitalization on both sides of the state line. This chart shows the falling trend since the Omicron spike in December. Missouri's rolling two week average of hospitalizations is 380. That's down 17% in the last two weeks. Kansas is at 99 patients in hospitals with COVID down 20%. A new study this morning links COVID-19 to shingles. In a pool of more than 400 adults ages 50 and up who had a mild case of COVID, 15% of them got shingles within six months of infection. 
<coughs> excuse me, more severe COVID cases increase the shingles risk by 21%. Researchers think that because your immune system takes a hit when you get the virus, it makes you more likely to get other viruses. Makes sense. Leewood police are looking for people who robbed a CVS pharmacy. This was Sunday afternoon, the CVS at 119th and Row. Four people dressed in all black walked into a restricted pharmacy area and stole containers of prescription cough syrup. They drove off in a gold or tan Chevy Trailblazer. If you can help police catch the culprits, get in touch with the tips hotline. You can scan the QR code on your screen to send in a tip or call anytime 816-474-TIPS. If you had items stolen from your storage unit, you may have a way to get your stuff back this week. Kansas City, Missouri police recently found hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of stolen items. Visit Metro Patrol Station on Prospect to tomorrow or Friday between 9 and 3 to reclaim those items. You do need to bring a police report ID and a car or truck large enough to get your stuff back. KCPD tells us they now know of dozens of theft victims on both sides of the state line. Police took someone into custody in this case last week. All right, 808, let's check back in with Katie to see what we have in store weather-wise today. Hopefully nobody has stolen your umbrella because yes. you'll, you'll want that over the next few days. There'll be plenty of opportunity to use that. This morning we have showers and thunderstorms. Those are going to move out. We'll have a couple of hours in the afternoon where it's nice and quiet. Then we have a cold front that arrives late this afternoon, early this evening. That may trigger another thunderstorm. Some showers and isolated strong thunderstorms are possible with that. Hail and wind may be accompanying some of those stronger thunderstorms tonight. The best chance of that is south of I-70. Tomorrow, a warm front lifts northward. We climb to 73 and along that warm front and out ahead of it, we could have a couple of thunderstorms also capable of producing some hail. That should be over with very early Friday morning morning. Most of Friday will be just windy. 40 mile an hour south wind gusts and warm 82 for the high. Saturday we prime up the atmosphere again for thunderstorms. Those may linger into Sunday morning, maybe even a little while uh, close to Sunday afternoon. There's a lot of uh, variability with that. We'll keep you updated, but right now keeping in mind the NOAA 5k run Sunday morning right now. Be ready for rain and be pleasantly surprised if the rain ends early. Jamie, I will not. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna practice running in my rain jacket this week. Oh That's yeah, definitely. Definitely. We did just get a report of a crash to tell you about. This is gonna be outside of the downtown loop. Uh, I-35, the southbound lanes here. It looks like uh, they've just shifted around our camera here, so we'll try to get you that correct information in a little bit. Can tell you though, the middle lane is closed. This is gonna be I-35 southbound near the Paseo. We'll get that correct camera up for you in just a couple minutes, Cody. See you then, Jamie. Thank you. You. Funeral services are this morning for late independent city councilwoman Karen DeLucy. She died last week from lung cancer. She was 64 years old. Family and friends gathered last night for a visitation at St. Mark's Catholic Church. DeLucy was elected to an at large council seat in April 2014 and before that served on the Independence Planning Commission for 16 years. Services start this morning at 1130 at St. Mark's. President Biden says the U.S. is sending more artillery to Ukraine as the battle for the eastern Donbass region and for Ukraine's future is happening right now. Exa Diaz is in our Washington bureau. Exa, is Russia hoping to split the country in two? Cody, Russia is hoping to capture the Donbass region, but Ukrainians are vowing to fight. And the U.S. is preparing to send more artillery tailored and designed for that fight. The White House says the U.S. will provide more ammunition and security assistance to Ukraine after President Biden met virtually with world leaders about the next phase of the Russian war. Will you be sending more artillery to Ukraine? Yes. The U.S. has already sent more than two and a half billion dollars in military aid to Ukraine. Just last week, the president approved an $800 million package that includes helicopters and artillery systems. The Pentagon says U.S. forces will train Ukrainians on how to use some of that equipment. Artillery pieces are not all that radically different from one another, and we don't think it's going to take very long for them to, to, to go through the training on that. Ukrainians are defending the eastern part of their country while trying to evacuate civilians trapped in the war-torn port city of Mariupol. Ukrainian forces there refusing to surrender. The enemy's units are 10 times larger than ours. We appeal to the world leaders to help us. One of the challenges for the Pentagon right now is shipping the military equipment to Ukrainian forces quickly and safely. 
in Washington. Ike Diaz, KNBC 9 News. Now, Russia is focused on taking Mariupol because that would deprive Ukraine of a key port. It would also complete a sort of land bridge between Russia and the Crimean Peninsula, which Russia seized from Ukraine in 2014. KNBC 9 continues to work with the Red Cross to help the people of Ukraine. You can join the effort by going to KNBC.com slash Red Cross. This morning, a local man with a worldwide mission is back home and already planning his next trip. I would go back again if I could, if I could feel genuinely confident it's going to make a significant difference. We have followed this Western man's journey to and from war-torn Ukraine, and now he's continuing his work here at home. We'll show you his next project. If you've got plans this evening between 4 and 7 p.m., we need you to be weather aware. We're tracking some strong thunderstorms. I'll show you where those may pop up in just a moment. First Alert Weather, over 100 years of combined experience to keep you safe. KNBC 9 News, leading the way. Good morning, everyone. We do have a crash reported on I-35 southbound lanes just outside the downtown loop. Let's take a look at this. This is going to be near the Paseo. That's the camera we're using. Check this out. Crash was reported in this middle lane. We are seeing an ambulance arrive on scene. Crews have now blocked off those two left lanes of the southbound I-35. And we know this is causing quite the delay. If you head up to the 3529 split, your commute now to downtown going to be about eight minutes. Keep in mind, you might want to take the Buck O'Neill Bridge instead. Cody? Yeah, that's good advice, Jamie. Thank you. Tonight, you can speak directly with Wyandotte County's new mayor about how you think the UG's budget should be spent. Leaders have dubbed the conversation dot talk. Good marketing there. There are three listening sessions. First is tonight from 6 to 8, the Wyandotte County Museum. That's 126th Street in Bonner Springs. There'll be pizza, play options for your kids so that you can uh, take part and listen to the conversation. County does ask that you sign up ahead of time. I've tweeted out a link to RSVP if you're interested. One county over, Johnson County could regain control of its public transportation services. For the last seven years, the KCATA has handled bus routes in Johnson County. Well, tomorrow night, the county board will decide whether they'd like to take back that responsibility. Now, JOCO would still 
still be a part of Ride Casey's routes. There would just be a different group handling the planning. We'll let you know what's decided. A Weston man is back home after spending more than five weeks on the ground in Ukraine. Paul Schwenison helped with military and humanitarian efforts near Kyiv. He and his wife have also raised money to get more supplies to people there. These donations help provide a woman with groceries. That's something Paul says he'll never forget. Just to see her break down in tears, and it was hard to hold, hold it back myself. I don't think I'll ever forget that moment because you just you have that very human connection. You realize what they've been through and it just comes sort of bubbling out of them. Paul and his wife are now raising money to buy pickup trucks for the Ukrainian military. Michael A. Taylor's Golden Gloves on full display. Look at this rocket from center field all the way to home plate. He's out. With one win under the belt, the series see how the Royals will honor local students tonight, including those facing some unique challenges. Construction starts today in the historic Jazz District on a massive apartment building. It's called One Nine Vine, built along East 19th Street between the Paseo and Vine. Six-story building will have market rate one and two bedroom units. No opening date yet. Uh, today is just the groundbreaking. The plan is to add retail spaces and restaurants to the ground floor. Tonight is the final event of Big Brothers Big Sisters of Greater Kansas City's Big Draft Campaign. From 5.30 to 7.30 at no other pub in Power and Light, you can learn more about what it takes to be a big. There were more than 200 littles on a waiting list hoping that you'll step up to help. One big who attends tonight's workshop will win tickets to a Chiefs game. Tonight, administrators at Kansas City, Missouri Public Schools will talk about changing the district start times. No decisions yet. High schools, middle schools, some elementary schools would run from 8 to 3. The remaining elementary schools would be in school from 915 to 415. No vote scheduled for tonight. Again, just talk, just discussion. The first Buck O'Neill Classic is in the books. The Kansas Jayhawks baseball team hosted Texas Southern at Legends Field last night in KCK. Both teams wore uniforms to pay tribute to the Negro Leagues. Jayhawks wore uniform style to be a lot like the Kansas City Monarchs. Said Jayhawks on the front, though. Really neat. Texas Southern paid tribute to the Homestead Grays. They hope to make this a yearly event. Of course, this summer, Buck O'Neill will finally, deservedly, be inducted into the National Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown. The second baseman for the Jayhawks actually grew up in KC and wore number 22 to honor the late, great Buck O'Neill. It was special. It was special for sure being able to 
honor uh, the legend, Buck O'Neill. And uh, we're 22, it's pretty cool. My family can come watch me and wear these super cool uniforms, you know, but yeah, I think it should uh, continue and be a, a yearly thing. Kansas Jayhawks win the inaugural Buck O'Neill Classic. They beat the Tigers 7-6. to six. Well done. Kansas City Royals are back at home hosting a midweek series against the Minnesota Twins. Carlos Hernandez took the mound for game one. He got some help from the defense, staying scoreless even through this close call in the third. Ryan Jeffers singles to center. Gary Sanchez tries to score from second. Michael A. Taylor says, oh, no, 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 no. No, you're not going to do that. Shows why he won a gold glove last year. Nail Sanchez at the plate. Cam Gallagher make that tag for the out. There's a review. It holds up. A hundred owes your homer. And by the way, two from Salvi. His second multi-homer night this year helps the Royals lock in win one for this series. 4-3 is your final. Same two teams back at it tonight. First pitch 7-10 at the K. Wednesdays are student nights, meaning students get in for $10 with an ID. A student from the Sherwood Autism Center will be throwing out the first pitch. April, if you didn't know, is Autism Acceptance Month. And the Royals hope to draw attention to the work they're doing at Sherwood at tonight's game. Ponchos for the tailgate, though, probably, Katie, right? I would think that's a good idea yeah. because there is a chance of rain showers towards the beginning of the game, but by the second, third inning, I think the rain chance decreases rapidly. Temperatures right now are in the 50s. We have a southeast wind blowing at about 10 to 20 miles an hour, and here's radar. I want to show you there is a thunderstorm complex heading up towards Trenton. It is moving northeast. It's not creating severe weather, but, of course, we always want to respect lightning, and it is... Uh, producing some lightning strikes right now. The rain that's coming through Kansas City is not producing lightning. It's just brief a little rain. A couple of times it might get heavy, but it should not cause you too many problems on the roads this morning. Here's a bigger view of the rain. You can see the scattered showers and thunderstorms throughout Missouri and Arkansas, the very light rain that's in Kansas City along state line. But your eye should be drawn to this, what looks like a spider on the middle of the map. This area of low pressure and all the fronts that spin around it. Each front is the leading edge of a different type of an air mass. This is the warm front, so south of that is a warm, somewhat muggy air mass. The cold front behind that, the air is colder. This is the dry line. Behind that, the air is drier. Every front is a focusing mechanism for thunderstorms. And with all of that translating from Kansas towards Missouri, in Arkansas, there will be a risk of some strong, possibly severe weather, though there, it is conditional. But if there's going to be severe weather, it's most likely going to be in this area shaded in red, which is south of Kansas City. But we could see some strong thunderstorms all the way up to the metro when that frontal complex gets closer to us. This is what it looks like on future scan. Notice the cold front approaching and then right along that front between four and seven, a couple of thunderstorms will ignite night and a couple of showers will form as well. That's what might come through the K when the game is just getting started. I'm more concerned about those isolated thunderstorms that may produce some hail and strong winds. So keep an eye on those this evening late this afternoon, early this evening, but then it moves through quickly and we're back to calm, clear conditions for the overnight. So tomorrow we'll start dry and then there's another chance of a shower or a thunderstorm in the evening on Thursday. Friday morning, those should be gone. Warm and very windy on Friday. Another chance of rain Saturday night.
Hey, good morning, everyone. We need to get back to this crash reported on I-35 just outside of the downtown loop. We are changing up our camera angle, looking southbound now, I-35, just before Front Street. Let's take a look here. We've got all of these left lanes blocked. Just watched one uh, ambulance drive out of the scene here. But keep in mind, they've blocked this left uh, exit ramp here, so cars are really having to merge all the way over to take that exit for the Paseo. Keep in mind, this has slowdowns backed up to the 3529 split. Cody. Wow. Okay, Jamie, thank you. The unified government of Wyandotte County is working to undo damage caused by a cyber attack over the weekend. For right now, the Kansas DMV has suspended service with Wyandotte County. Appraisal appeals have been rescheduled and the county court is having to handle every filing in person. Find more information online about what's been affected at WyCoKCK.org. If you've had items stolen from your storage unit, you may have a way to get your stuff back this week. KCPD recently found hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of stolen items. They took someone into custody late last week. You can visit Metro Patrol Station on Prospect tomorrow and Friday between 9 and 3 to reclaim your items if they're there. You do need to bring a police report that you filed, an ID, and of course a car or truck large enough to haul your stuff away. Nick? Cody, scattered downpours and a few thunderstorms. Those thunderstorms running from about Cameron, Hamilton, up to Jamesport and Trenton. Scattered downpours, Lee Summit, Pleasant Hill, down to Harrisonville, and then those showers are all across to the Kansas City Metro. Back to KCK, Parkville, Farrellview, down to Lenexa. So it's a, an umbrella or a rain jacket kind of morning. This afternoon, less of a chance of rain, lower rain chances, but there is a chance of thunderstorms between 4 and 7 o'clock as the cold front comes through if those storms develop. It's a big if they may produce some strong wind and hail. Thursday morning, a cloudy sky. Thursday afternoon and evening, rainy and stormy impacts. And like today, there could be a few stronger storms in the afternoon. Our next highest chance of rain and thunderstorms is Saturday evening, Saturday night, and the Sunday morning. Committed to serving the residents of Kansas and Missouri, KMBC 9 News, leading the way. If you have travel plans that take you south later today, we want you to know there is a risk of severe weather. I'll use FutureScan to show you what to expect. The group in charge of the Kansas City, Missouri Police Department will now let people from across the state line join the force. We'll explore why other city leaders aren't so thrilled with that idea. Russia ramps up its attack on eastern Ukraine, but soldiers there refuse to surrender. 
We'll look at how soon the U.S. could send another round of aid. 8.32 on your Wednesday morning. Thanks so much for starting your day with us. I'm Cody Holyoke alongside First Alert Meteorologist Katie Horner. All kinds of green blobs behind you <laughs> as we as we continue to like just deal with April showers. I mean, we're in the month. So. Somebody asked me to describe what you do without saying what you do. I track green blobs. That's what I do, and especially the orange and the yellow. I imagine it's quite noisy right now in Gallatin. You've got the most thunder that we have in the area right now, right over you, and that's headed towards Jamesport, and then eventually in a few minutes up towards Trenton. No severe weather, but lightning is present. And as you come back to Kansas City, you'll need your umbrella or rain gear of choice if you don't want to get wet, because we have rain showers now, and we have more rain showers in the forecast. This is Future Scan showing a couple quiet hours for a while this afternoon. Then this late afternoon and evening when the cold front arrives, it's going to generate a couple more showers over us that could impact the opening pitch uh, at the Royals game tonight, but a couple of strong thunderstorms are possible conditional on what happens in the atmosphere during the afternoon. But if those storms do form, they could produce some hail and some strong winds. Most of those would be from the northern side of 435 KCI Feral View Liberty southward would be the better chance for that Jamie. Katie, we are still tracking that crash on I-35 southbound just when you get over the Bond Bridge. Check this out. We are still seeing those two left lanes blocked. Did see a tow truck in the area. They might be trying to get uh, this car on the tow truck potentially, but you know, these cars, there we go. There's the tow truck moving. Thought I had seen it there. So they are trying to clear out that crash. Also want to let you know about we have just gotten a report of another crash. This is going to be I-70 near Van Brunn Boulevard eastbound lanes. Check this out. Two left lanes closed here as well as crews work to tow away that vehicle. We've seen ambulances at both of these crash scenes. We'll we'll try to get much more information in a few minutes. Cody sounds good, Jamie. Thank you. The unified government of Wyandotte County and KCK is still reeling from a cyber attack. KMC 9's Martin Augustine has been watching the impact. He's live in Wyandotte County this morning. Martin, we know UG services are still hurting right now. Yeah, from legal issues to renewing the license plates on your car are all affected by this weekend hack of the UG's computer system. The state of Kansas has suspended all motor vehicle services with Wyandotte County. For now, there can be no electronic filings for the county's court proceedings. Services through the district attorney's office delayed as well. This attack severe enough to warrant investigations by the Department of Homeland Security and the FBI. KCK Mayor Tyrone Garner says, we appreciate the hard work of UG technology and security teams on their swift response to the attack. Now, Mayor Garner is optimistic that the county is going to bounce back just fine uh, once everything is squared away as they, as we said, untangle this hack. There is a counter uh, or a cybersecurity team with the Mid-America Regional Council that's in on this as well, trying to determine whether or not data or personal information in any way was compromised by this hack. Reporting live in KCK, Martin Augustine, KBC 9 News. Interesting to see what they find, Martin. Thank you. Former worker of the Johnson County District Court is now convicted in a million-dollar fraud scheme. Donna Kellogg pleaded guilty to federal charges of wire fraud and giving a fake tax return. Prosecutors say she managed the court's accounting department and stole $1.1 million between 2007 and 2017. A small change could have a big impact on KCPD. Kansas residents can now become officers. Now, only one member of the Board of Police Commissioners wasn't on board with the switch. Yesterday's vote decided officers can now live in Kansas as long as they are 30 miles away from the city, within 30 miles. Before that, all employees had to live in Missouri. Mayor Quentin Lucas is worried. He says the board's decision will build a less diverse department, less familiar with Kansas City. At a time where after two years we have been talking about how do we build community connections, how do we build further trust, I don't think anybody would say that this makes things better in terms of how you do that. Now, the outgoing police chief, Rick Smith, is defending the change, saying that the expanded requirements will help recruit and retain officers. Yesterday's meeting was his last as chief before the board. He's retiring Friday after 34 years with KCPD and five years as chief. Do I feel like I, I've made some improvements here? Do I, I feel like some decisions that the team and I have come up with? Yeah, I think there's some, some added aspects. And frankly, I'm sure the next person will do equally as well and hopefully leave it better than I have it today. That's what we all hope. Deputy Chief Joe Maven will be the interim chief until the police board can choose Smith's replacement. Kansas City leaders are discussing ways to curb a violence in KCMO after nine people have been killed this past week. 
The city's health director says it's something her staff can actually help with. Remember uh, when Dr. Marvy Jones first took office right before she did day one, she came on KMBC 9, told us one of her priorities as health director was to address gun violence. She said it was a public health threat. She says the best way to tackle this issue is to treat it like any disease. We know that like any contagious disease, um, more violence can tend to beget more violence, you know, which is again where we're focusing on how do we intervene at an early stage. Kansas City Child Protective Center is also concerned about the recent outbreak of violence. They were told uh, they're watching the stats. They say there's been a 30% rise in the number of kids who have witnessed a homicide, have seen it in the past two years. Makes your head spin. Kansas City, Missouri Health Department will start rolling out new programs soon, we're told, focusing on strengthening families and working to break the cycle of violence. The Wyandotte County Sheriff's planning to release new details today about a murder from last summer. On August 15th, deputies found 30-year-old Skylar Needham shot and killed inside a car in Matney Park. A few days later, deputies took five people into custody in connection with this case. Last we heard, no charges had been filed against any of those people. 838, those new mask freedoms that a judge just uh, put aside here might not last long. The U.S. Department of Justice says they could appeal that judge's ruling. For now, though, the choice is up to travelers. Should people continue to wear masks on planes? That's up to them. DOJ is deferring to the CDC about what to do next. They wanted the mandate in place until at least May 3rd. A doctor say it's important to remember uh, coronavirus is still deadly, especially in close quarters. If someone's not wearing a mask, even if you're wearing a very high quality mask like this, an N95 mask, they're infected. You have about an hour, hour and 15 minutes of protection. Keep in mind, the new subvariant of Omicron spreads 25% faster than the original doctors say. And together, uh, Omicron and BA2 make up for almost all new COVID cases in the U.S. The latest COVID hospitalizations in both our states are showing some promise going in the right direction here. Chart shows a falling trend since the spike in December. Missouri's rolling two-week average of hospitalizations is 380. That's down 17% in the last two weeks. Kansas is below 100 now at 99, down 20%. 839 and we've been hoping that the temperatures will rise and it looks like we're finally getting our wish here. Kate. Yeah, we have some warm days that you'll see in the nine day forecast and at least this morning it's not freezing, but a couple of things should grab your attention when you look at our 12 hour forecast. The first two yellow triangles for the impact the weather will have on this morning. You'll hear from Jamie in a moment. There's already been a couple of accidents. We don't know if the rain is the reason why, but there are some showers in the area and a couple of thunderstorms quiet for the middle of the afternoon. Then I want to draw your attention between 4 and 7 p.m. this evening. We'll get another round of rain. There could be one or two strong thunderstorms at that time, most likely south of Kansas City, but we'll track that for you. And then Thursday, we also have a risk of some strong thunderstorms. Those should end early on Friday. Saturday, we have evening thunderstorms. Hopefully that ends early on Sunday. But right now, I know Jamie's planning on running the NOAA 5K. I know our Neville Miller will be running that. You might be planning to run that. There is a chance of rain Sunday morning, but hopefully it'll come and go without consequence. Yeah, fingers crossed on that one, Katie. Want to give a major traffic alert to Northland drivers because take a look at this. I have not seen a 35-29 split taking more than about seven minutes since I started here. This is the longest slowdown I've seen, and it's because of this crash we've been keeping our eye on since the start of the hour. This is uh, I-35 at Front Street. The good news is in just the last couple minutes, they finally cleared away that crash, but as you saw, it is still causing severe slowdowns in the Northland. It's probably going to be that way for another couple of minutes. I want to let you know real quick, we are still keeping our eye on this crash, I-70 uh, eastbound, just past Van Brunt Boulevard. We're starting to see those raindrops falling on top of the camera, so definitely some slick roads out there. You can see car slid into the barrier there. Just take it slow, especially a lot of people out there on the roadway dealing with this crash. Uh, left lane, left two lanes really closed because of this. No slowdowns that we're really seeing on I-70 though, Cody. All right, good to know, Jamie. Thanks for looking out. The Olathe School District is hoping to get new input from parents about policies to keep kids safe. And the request comes more than a month after a prosecutor say a student shot two people inside Olathe East High School. At a town hall meeting last night, the district pitched their plan, including things like having locked entries, ID checkpoints, more school resource officers, mental health professionals, even a tip system for students. District, though, is not in favor of metal detectors, saying that the drawbacks outweigh the benefits. Administrators want parents to know school is still a safe place for their kids. School is the safest place for a teenager to be. Statistically speaking, there's no safer place, including their home, 
including the car, driving with you, um, including vacation. There's no safer place for a student to be than in school. Now, the district didn't speak much about the shooting directly. We know 18-year-old Jalen Elmore is accused of shooting an assistant principal and a school resource officer. Elmore still in the hospital from injuries because the officer fired back, prosecutors say. Olathe schools recently cut student wellness advocates because of budget challenges. There will now be four in the district. The head of a local group helping kids is praising a new Kansas law imposing harsher penalties for child abuse. The law boosts felony levels for child abuse charges, so sentences now range from one and a half years to five years in prison, depending on the age of the child and the type of abuse. The CEO of CASA, Court Appointed Special Advocates of Johnson and Wyandotte Counties, says this law will help protect kids. So if a child has already been through those circumstances, the hope is that it's preventing them from further abuse by really, again, holding the accountability of the people who are perpetrating those crimes. CASA volunteers advocate for children who are removed from their homes for their safety. And the organization's always looking for new volunteers. Go to CASA's website, casajwc.org, to see how you can sign up. As Russia launches a new offensive in Ukraine, we're learning more help is on the way from the U.S. The White House plans to announce another major weapons delivery to the country as soon as this week. It might be similar, we're told, to the $800 million aid package President Biden announced last week, which includes missiles, drones, armored Humvees. Pentagon would not confirm exactly the type of weapons it might send this time. You have to do this smartly, and that means doing it in, in chunks and phases based on what their needs are in the moment. It would be irresponsible for us not to do it that way. A U.S. defense official says the U.S. and other countries have now given Ukraine 70,000 anti-tank weapons and 30,000 anti-aircraft missiles. You can help people in Ukraine this weekend. The Ukrainian Club of Kansas City is hosting a local all-day benefit. It's Saturday at the beer station on Gregory. Money raised will pay for medical supplies. Beer station is going to donate part of their sales to the cause. There's also an auction with prizes, including a batch of Ukrainian-style beer. There's a call to action for lawmakers coming straight from our local veterans. They say some service members aren't getting the medical support they need. We'll look at the health concern that would be covered if a new bill becomes law. One of KU's basketball superstars takes the next step forward in his career. Here, David McCormick's message to Jayhawks Nation as he starts going pro. We have showers and thunderstorms now, but later this afternoon, there is a chance of some stronger storms. I'll show you where to expect those. The latest facts, important updates, and what to expect. KNBC 9 First News, leading the way.
It is 847 Gallatin, Hamilton in Missouri getting some showers and thunderstorms now. Those lifting northeastward. We still have rain showers here in Kansas City. Then we will have a break for the afternoon. So your forecast looks like this this afternoon between four and seven we'll have a couple more thunderstorms rolling through some of them could produce hail those storms end probably between the first second inning of the game hopefully out of here for the rest of the game and a clearing sky calming wind tomorrow morning a nice quiet start and tomorrow afternoon jamie we do it all again another chance of hailstorms. well katie we're definitely seeing the impact of the wet roads across the metro specifically close to downtown this is a new crash just reported Technically, the crash is on I-70, but the view is from I-35 at Admiral Boulevard. This has been really interesting to watch. So you've got this right lane blocked. Uh, this car, police car, had been in the left lane. So we've watched cars driving into the eastbound lanes of I-70 to get past uh, this crash here. But just take a look at the impacts of everything going on downtown. We are still seeing severe delays on I-35, that 29 split to downtown. And want to quickly check in on that other crash we've been following over on I-70. This is going to be near Van Brunt Boulevard, where you're you're really seeing the rain impacts on front of the camera. Tow truck we had originally seen is gone. It looks like they're getting rid of the cones here. But keep in mind, you've still got that car blocking the left lane where it had driven into the guardrail. Just take it slow on the roads. We're starting to see more crashes, and we don't want to deal with that this morning, Cody. No, not at all, Jamie. Thank you. An independent autopsy report shows the Michigan police officer who killed this man, Patrick Leoya, pressed the gun against the back of Leoya's head before firing. 26 year old black man was shot and killed during a struggle with the officer after a traffic stop in Grand Rapids earlier this month. Family attorney Ben Crump says this is another senseless killing of an unarmed black person in America. Patrick Iola was shot in the back of his head. That is now scientific evidence of this tragic killing and what his family believes was an execution. Results of the official autopsy have not been publicly released and Leoya's family still has not been able to see Mr. Leoya's body. State police are looking into the shooting. We know that the officer who shot Leoya is on paid leave. Police say they will not release his name unless he's charged with a crime. Missouri Governor Mike Parsons joining 25 other governors in forming a group called the American Governors Border Strike Force. It's in response to what Republican governors call the president's failure to secure the southern border. The strike force would coordinate states' efforts to combat human smuggling, stop drug trafficking. Governor's office claims that the task force will not cost Missouri any money. Kansas and Missouri's attorneys general want the fundraising website GoFundMe to be more transparent about where people's donations are going. They and 27 other attorneys general sent a letter to the site to the company calling for clarity. They want owners to explain how they set standards for fundraisers, how they investigate those fundraisers, and how they figure out when to block, freeze, or refund donations. Veterans gathered in Kansas City, Missouri Tuesday to call on Congress to pass a bill ensuring health care for veterans exposed to toxins while serving their country. The group gathered outside VFW National Headquarters in Midtown calling for the approval of something called the Honoring Our Pact Act. Comedian and activist John Stewart was there supporting the bill. He's one of the most vocal advocates. The group wants the support of U.S. senators so this bill can become law. They don't realize that toxic wounds are wounds. That sleeping next to a burn pit is like getting hit with an IED that goes off in your body seven years later. It's time to put politics aside and it's time to get this done and do work for veterans. Again, the bill passed the House early last month now goes to the U.S. Senate. KU National Champ David McCormick has declared for the NBA draft. Announced his decision yesterday afternoon. In an Instagram post, he thanked his coaches, teammates, family, Jayhawks Nation. He says his decision came after talking to family and coaches. And he ends by writing, quote, I can't imagine ending my career at Kansas better than we did this past season as national champions. Rock shot. Tigers fans, we have some news for you, too. University of Missouri is holding a week-long sale on tickets for this year's football opener. Mark your calendars. September 1st at Faroe Field is uh, when the game's going to happen. Tigers taking on Louisiana Tech. With this sale, tickets start at just $20 a piece. MU is trying to fill seating that was originally planned to be used for visiting teams. And this offer is good until 1159 Monday night. Sporting